Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kim Greenhouse. I produce and host the show called It's Rainmaking Time, for those of you who don't know me. I've been doing it for years. It's about new and ancient knowledge and discovery and breakthroughs. In the last year and a half, I've been participating in uh, commentaries that ordinarily was subjects I wouldn't touch, but I realized I'm, I'm at that point in my life where I have to embrace these concepts and embrace these things going on in the world and actually open it up and talk about it. Now, given what's happening in the world, I want to open up the conversation because most of us have our opinions, our passions, uh, things that we declare. We have a lot of charge about what's going on, and we should. However, after watching a lot of commentaries and interviews um, on Twitter and YouTube and other platforms, it occurs to me that maybe, just maybe, we should have another kind of conversation. I don't condone violence and killing. I don't condone the butchering of human beings. And by the way, I don't condone the butchering and inhumane treatment of animals either. I do make a distinction, and it, and it hurts me to have people refer to people as animals when they're violent. Animals are not violent. They kill to eat, most of them, or for territory, territory or to mate. Sometimes it gets really out of hand. But for the most part, they kill to eat, not just to kill. Humans kill to kill. Okay, so to refer to people that butcher other people as animals, I think is the wrong reference point. You want to call them monsters? Maybe a monster is a better term. But they're not animals because animals don't do what humans do. I just want to, on behalf of the animal kingdom, clear that up. Secondly, what I'm going to talk about regarding this subject and what's going on in the world today, I have no right to talk about it. I'm nobody from nowhere. I have a few companies. I produce 450 segments of its rainmaking time uh, some on television many, many years ago, and since 2009, about 450 segments, most of them in audio, and the last year and a half in audio and video. I'm nobody from nowhere, but I'm an old soul, and I have some insight and some perspectives that may be useful to you, whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever you're going through. I do not know for a fact the true history of Palestine and the Middle East, I don't know the truth about any of it. I have a huge gap in my education and my understanding in geopolitics, and so I speak not from it, okay? Just so we're all clear before I begin what I'm about to say. The purpose of this talk and why I've postponed any other segments that were supposed to be aired in October is because I feel this is right now more important, more instrumental in terms of world events and potentially more inflammatory, more dangerous what's going on, and I feel called to do it. So that's why I'm doing this talk. First of all, because it's rainmaking time has pursued introducing the public to new and ancient knowledge and discovery, that means also that most of the world is not privy to that information and knowledge. It could be said that most of the world doesn't receive, doesn't really see a human being as an electrical plasma bio, biological being with a mind and a spirit and a consciousness. And because of this, we look at human beings as mechanical with a personality rather than electrical and magnetic with a consciousness. The way we deal with everything is very different. How you perceive what's happening. So how we perceive human beings is very important. Because if we're just mechanical with personalities, a lot of solutions are going to be handled a particular way. 
So I'm going to assert some things. And I know that the Navy, the intelligence agencies, the NSA, the CIA knows what I'm talking about. Special forces, the remote viewers, okay? We are living in a magnetic field, and we have a magnetic field that emanates photons, frequencies, electrical communication. Our consciousness is electrical. We emanate frequencies all the time. You could say, okay, fine. However, we've also found out, in fact, many years ago in quantum physics, that what you observe and how you observe something, you impact it. You actually influence whatever it is that you're observing. So this is not a new age translation of anything, nor is it a religious translation of anything. I'm talking quantum physics here. If that's true, and if we can verify that, and that's verifiable, and quantum physicists across the world know this is, we also know that how we hold energy, how we contain energy, what our conscious intent is on anything, voice, video, any type of observation, what we listen to, is being spun around in our consciousness, in our emotional capability, and that's being expressed in the world. So billions of people right now, billions of human beings who are in a, in a magnetic field, who are part of a magnetic field, who have a magnetic field, who emanate frequencies and transmit them and who receive them, who have an emotional body, an auric field, a meridian system. Remember, acupuncture is thousands of years old. It's an ancient system. We have a meridian system. I want you to consider that we, in a way where we, many of us, feel that we make no difference, that we're victims of what's going on, that we really can't stop what's going on because it's beyond us, it's happening over there, it's happening in Israel, or it's happening in Ukraine. I want you to consider that right where we are, right where we are, as powerless as we feel, as helpless as we feel, as angry as we feel, as upset as we feel, as frustrated as we feel, and whatever our perspectives are, whatever our beliefs are, whatever we've been told, whatever facts, both real and mis, mis, kind of misunderstood or completely inaccurate facts that we're holding in our system are all coming together in how we're responding to these events. So here's the thing. You may feel like no matter what you do, you have no say. This thing is going to go on. It's biblically, it's, it's, it's biblically prophesized. You know, this is what's been prophesied in the Bible. And this is World War III all of that. I want you to consider that we don't have to buy into that. We don't have to align with that. We don't have to agree with that. We don't have to come from that place. We don't have to speak that, and we don't have to watch the videos that affirm it. Now, am I saying turn a blind eye? No. Am I saying that what's happening isn't happening? No. Am I saying that there, isn't ter there aren't terrible, violent, horrible things going on? No, I'm not saying there aren't. There are. There are. Is there a history with Israel and Palestine and the whole region there that's loaded with strife and complexity and nuances and misunderstandings or understandings, but still conflict? Of course. But knowing what the, the quantum physicists know about how we can impact events from afar, we owe it to ourselves as human beings to take a chance, take a leap of faith, jump, jump into quantum physics now. 
Hold yourself as a magnetic field. Hold yourself as an electrical field. Hold yourself as a receiving and transmitting organism with consciousness. Hold the vision of remedies. Hold the vision of a renaissance in that area of the world. Hold the vision no matter what's happening, no matter what people are telling you, no matter how many people are telling you to bomb, to do this, to do that, to strike, to kill, to get back at. Hold the energy and a vision for a transformation and a renaissance in the Middle East, no matter what. No matter if a family member was hurt or killed, if a friend was hurt or killed, no matter what. Now, some people that are very uh, entrained in the fight, in the eye for an eye, are going to call me a pacifist and say I'm refusing to take a stand. Not true. Not true. I'm saying that all of us, all over the world, that are not there in the immediate area having to defend ourselves physically and our friends and our loved ones in our communities and our civilians, we have an obligation to imprint, to magnify, to use our magnetic field. Listen, the Navy knows this. The Navy knows we are a magnetic field. Quantum physicists know this all over the world. We are a magnetic field and have consciousness. And we're living in a magnetic field. So we have an obligation as just being human beings from any religion, any tradition, any background, you know, any domain of expertise to hold the energy and hold the vision for a transformation for workability, for community, for restoration, for some type of a transformational deal, some negotiation, some something that's unexpected, some miracle that we can't believe in. A miracle that we cannot believe in, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to believe it. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you a personal story. It's an anecdote. I had a friend in 2008 who had a torn rotator cuff and I think it was her left shoulder it was really really bad after a bad accident and it was getting so bad that she was going to go in for surgery and at the time I had a client who did something called super prayers okay let's we won't get into the nature of it but I said to her listen and I was helping this client transform her ministry and I said to my friend, listen, you have nothing to lose, okay? You don't have to believe in this stuff. If you're just receptive, just receptive, let's do this. I'll go into the church with you. I'll hold the energy. I'll be a proxy for your healing and a transformational proxy for this transformation of your biology in a way that defies your rational mind. Let's do it. Let's try it. I didn't know if it would work. I really didn't. I thought, she has nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. Let's do it. And do you know, my friend had a transformation, a miracle occur that evening in seconds. She could barely lift her arm and had a total transformation. So I have been witness, personal witness, to a miracle that defied my own traditional upbringing. I was born into a Jewish family. This was not my thing. I mean, th this, this, you know, miracle and this kind of prayer and transforming biology, I mean, it made no sense to me. I saw no way that this could happen, but it happened. And, and, and I didn't, you know how people say, well, you have to believe in it. No, I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe in it. I was simply receptive. So being receptive, is more important than we even know for miracles, transformation, for healing, for a renaissance of the human spirit, for the human civilization, as uncivilized as it can be and appears to be. Instead of projecting how bad this one is, 
how bad that one is, how horrible this group is, how horrible that group is. As much as we may have evidence keep coming and the, and the declaration that that's a fact, if we don't go beyond those declarations and video evidence or audio evidence of killings, beheadings, slaughterings, it, 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 it literally interfere, interferes, excuse me, with the magnetic field potentiating a transformation in a state change across the world. I cannot tell you how important this is right now. No matter who's talking, no matter how bad some leaders in certain countries are talking and they're saying, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and boom, 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 and we're going to slaughter them and we're going to bury them to the ground. All that, put it aside. Let, let the people in the field handle what they have to handle for their defense. In other words, our job as observers, as onlookers, onlookers is to hold a magnetic field of healing, restitution, recovery, renaissance, resolution, a new understanding, a transformation, a state change in the same way that I did not believe that my friend could have a transformation of her left shoulder. Biologically, it's impossible. I didn't have that training. I didn't grow up believing that, and I still didn't believe it when I sat in the church with her. I was simply receptive because the stakes were so high. And what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that the stakes are high. They're so high. None of us can afford a nuclear war. None of us can afford to get that agitated, that crazed, that resentful, that disassociated is to allow this to happen. And no matter how much anger people express and rage, and I'm done. Here's another thing. I'm done. We're done. It's time to bang. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're not in the Stone Age yet again. We're not in the Stone Age. We're not in the early part of the Industrial Revolution. We're in a whole other world of tech. And just declaring you're done or we're done, that's a very dangerous thing now, we're done. Think about it. You don't want to be done. You're being called to exercise something else. We may not know how. We may feel it's impossible. We may not trust this side or that side. I get it. And I'm not there living in it. Like I said, I have no right to say anything. I have no right. I'm just a human being, and I'm introducing this to you because the stakes are so high. It's amazing we have such advanced technology. We've come so far in some ways, and in other ways, we're very young. Humanity's young. You ever think about that? In the scheme of everything. We're young, a lot of young souls on this planet. And maybe, you know, the young souls are in major power centers all over the world in different countries. We handle things like young people with tantrums a lot of times. You know, you don't do my thing, we don't play anymore. Look. I don't claim to know what these leaders go through. And I'm not passing judgment on them as human beings. I am saying the stakes are so high that if we don't do what we can do right where we are, what we project, what we listen to, do you think I don't, I don't accept that there are videos of people being butchered and maimed? But the conversation around it, I don't know that I can trust I can trust data in front of me. I don't know where it's coming from. I know what people's words they say it's coming from. I know that agitators around the world, paid agitators and paid killers can go put a put something over their face and go kill people. We don't know where they came from, who hired them, who talked to them, who brought them in. 
It's complicated. Geopolitical events are very complicated. I'm not saying it isn't what it is or what it's claimed to be. We're in a very uh, much more complex world. Much more complex world. And people can do incredibly horrible things with, a, with billions and trillions of dollars and huge budgets and ill will and not a wish to unite. We can't heal that right now. And when people say, oh, you're a pacifist, you can't just stand there and allow people to be beat up. I'm not in that conversation. That's for the military to deal with. The conversation I'm in is for the rest of us. This is for the rest of us, okay? So what I'm going to do is also throw out something for others of you to consider. And that is this concept of an eye for an eye. I came up with this. This came to me uh, last week on Sunday. And I thought to myself, how can we get beyond? Can we get beyond an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Is that possible? Is that even possible? I mean, it's biblically imprinted. It's like in the consciousness. And it's ingrained in billions of us. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Is it possible to transcend this? Is it possible to consider transcending it? Is there a beyond? This is an encoded, almost like a meme. It's encoded. And it's got power. And it's got force. And it's got charge. And I think it has us. I'm not sure we just read it or heard it. I think it has us as human beings. Again, it's something to consider. Can we ever get beyond an eye for an eye? Because basically, it's sick. It just goes on replay. It's like an endless loop. Are we ever going to be able to get beyond an eye for an eye if it's running on an endless loop there's going to be events and violent events in the world. It's something to consider. I don't think any of the military are going to be able, in anywhere in the world are going to be able to get beyond this. But we can. We can. From outside the military, we can get beyond this. And we can realize that it's something that's there, that has power, that for some reason has huge charge in human beings and often runs the show in major geopolitical conflict. So how we see, how we hold, how we receive data and information right now is very important. And I'm asking all of you to stand with me and hold for the transformation of the Middle East, a renaissance of the Middle East, a way to work together in the Middle East, that somehow, some way, there are and can be miraculous transformations that are unplanned, that we didn't necessarily believe could happen, in the same way I didn't believe my friend's shoulder could be transformed with no surgery and is still transformed today. If I hadn't been a witness to that, I don't know that I could say this to you, but I was a witness to this. I was a witness to this miracle. And it's the same kind of miracle, whether you believe in them or not, is irrelevant. It doesn't mean they don't occur. So you don't even have to believe in a miracle. <laughs> That's the nice thing. I didn't. I mean, I'd heard there were miracles, but I thought, ah, that's for the religious folks. That's not for me. That's not for me and my tribe and my, my groups, my people. I mean, I have faith. But I didn't believe in miracles, and you don't have to either. I'm just asking you if you could stay receptive, be very careful what you take in, what you say to yourself and others, hold the energy for a transformation, hold the energy for a renaissance of the human spirit, for a renaissance of togetherness, and for solutions to happen quickly now hold the now with me 
even though other people may say we're pacifists, we don't know what we're talking about, it's a bunch of new age, you can't do that, you got to fight back, you got to be in the spirit of war and fighting. That's fine. There are a lot of people that are there and they're going to stay there. It's never going to end. And, you know, they say the truth is sometimes in between. There's it's not black and white. There's gray. There is there's a lot of gray. There's a lot more gray than most of the news stations cover and the magazines cover and online articles are willing to cover. It's way more murky and gray where these conflicts are. And it's not just a conflict of ideology. Okay, it's a conflict of territory. It's a conflict in some cases of ideology. And it's a conflict of people, people's prejudices, not really wanting to live near certain people and, um, and uh, a, a, polariz- a, polarizing, a polarizing sense. You know, like the polarization is not just out there. It's here too. You know, we all grew up with it. And there are influences that um, have, a, uh, uh, have a charge in our lives that have more power than we understand. So I just wanted to say this to all of you that I want to invite you to look into the quantum field, the quantum magnetic field, to quantum physics, to what we observe, to what we tell ourselves, to the energy that we hold, to the consciousness that we are receiving and transmitting, what we align with, and there's a word also called entrainment, what we are entraining with. I want to invite you to entrain your conscious mind with a transformational state change in the Middle East, specifically right now focused on Israel, something that we never expected, and somehow, some way, a way that this can work beyond our imagination, beyond what anybody told us, beyond what we know has happened in the past. It's not easy, but we can do it. We all can do this. We can still have camaraderie and connectedness and connection to the people that we most identify with. But I'm asking you to hold the spirit of a transformation and renaissance on behalf of not just Israel, on behalf of the world. It's rainmaking time. Thank you. <laughs>